have in this region of the world, in this continent, a lot of governments that are opaque, a lot of governments that are not quite above the benchmark of some measure of integrity. Corruption is still a problem. Um, abuse and misuse of public funds is still very much a problem. Violations of human rights. Investigative reporting is really not a special kind of journalism. It should be at the core of everything we do. People say Asians value consensus, but I also say that there's a strain in our history that also values exposure, that values truth-telling. That is the right time for the first investigative journalism conference in Asia. So there are some countries like Nepal, like uh, here in the Philippines, uh, where we have a good and a, tradi a long tradition of uh, investigative journalism. But in most of the countries, uh, there's nothing like that or uh, they are just at the beginning. We have uh, challenges in investigative journalism because it's uh, very difficult to get information from the government. We don't have the right of information. Now we are trying. Our journalists need the capacity building for our people. Well, investigative reporting is new in Asia, but I think the ethos of investigative reporting, you know, the exposure of wrongdoing, holding powerful to account is embedded in Asian, in many Asian traditions and histories. So a conference like this is very important in terms of helping build a community of investigative journalists, helping build morale, and also in helping foster collaborations and reporting partnerships. Technology, globalization, uh, all the forces that in, in some ways are challenging journalism are making our job a lot easier. We can get data and documents. It's easier for us to, to collaborate across borders. Today, a journalist from Middle East was telling me they're doing a story there and they really need help from China to do the investigation since it's all connected. So this kind of collaboration from all these regional networks will be really important. I really think the best is yet to come. When you put the traditional tools within new media, you club the both, it can be a game changer. Everything we write is going to influence public opinion, is going to influence the government policies, is going to influence a lot of things in society. We have seen good journalism, it has changed governments, right here in the Philippines for example. The Philippines is a, a paradise for press freedom but also a hellish situation or scenario for um, media murders. We, we live in both freedom and fear in the Philippine press. The most difficult and most important case that we have, the Maguindanao massacre of November 2009, we had 32 journalists killed, single day, worst political violence incident in our history. And to this day, five years later, there's no justice. A hundred other respondents are still at large. Pakistan is a country that has been uh, among the list of top ten most dangerous countries for the press uh, for practicing journalism. When I was abducted and I was being beaten. I was telling myself that actually they are stamping me as a credible journalist. It uh, increased my faith on my profession. We should face the challenges so that the next generation of journalists, uh, they remain safe and uh, they can do work and we should become a role model for them. In Korea, the mainstream media don't play uh, their original role as a uh, 
journalistic organization. Collaboration and the share information globally is a very important thing. We are going to keep the power accountable and keep the people informed. That's very important in democracy.